Hello, everybody. This is Brian Ankney with Auto Success Magazine. Hey, I appreciate you all taking the time out of your day to, today to join us. Uh, we've got a great webinar for you today with some great content. Uh, you're all going to learn a lot of new things. Um, today, my guests are Alexi Veneri and Erica Sietzma. They're from Digital Airstrike. Uh, today, we're going to talk about some strategies to help you get more by spending less on your marketing budget. And before we get started, I would like to just go through a couple of things as far as how this webinar works. We're going to hold the questions until the end. And if you're on a laptop or you're on a tablet, it should be on the right side of your screen unless you moved it. There's a go to webinar pane near the bottom. It says questions. You hit the plus sign, and it, and it opens up and gives you the opportunity to type in questions. Please type the questions in as we go, and we will get to them at the end and address them. Um, also, if you are using an Android or an Apple phone, uh, depending on, on if you have it sideways or, or upright, somewhere on the, on the perimeter you're going to see a question mark. That's how you ask questions. You touch that question mark, and then same process. Type in the question, and we will get to them all at the end. Please type them in as we go. Now, one thing that I'd like to remind everybody to do, if you have not yet joined Auto Success Webinars on Facebook, it's a group on Facebook. Type Auto Success Webinars into the search bar. It'll bring it up. Request to join the group. This group is a place where you can interact with our speakers before, during, and after the shows. Uh, you can also, more importantly, interact with each other. You know, today our guests are going to teach you guys a lot of really cool ideas. And a lot of these things are not something where you just flip a switch and it happens. You know, these are things you're going to have to, you know, they're going to be multiple week processes, multiple day processes, multiple steps. And as you have successes and failures, I encourage you to share in auto success webinars because there's going to be a lot of other people that are trying to do the exact same things and you guys can learn from each other almost like a mini 20 group. Now, um, with, that, with that being said, please, uh, if there's any topics that you'd like to see in the future, speakers you'd like to see in the future, or any, any comments you might have about auto success webinars, please send me an email. Everybody on the webinar right now, that email address that's been sending you all the different reminders, that's my real email address. So please just reply with anything that you'd like to see or, or any remarks that you have about how the webinars go. With that, uh, you know, Lexi, Erica, please take us away. Awesome. Hi. Hi. Thanks so much, Brian. We are super excited to be here yes. today and talk about one of our favorite topics, helping everybody on this call spend less and get more. Who doesn't want that? Uh, so we're going to take you through some, some great tips on that and, and really help your dealership excel. So first thing, we all know these stats, but I'd love to review these right in the beginning. 60% of Americans use a smartphone tablet to search for local product or service information. I don't think that's surprising anymore. I can't even think of the last time I used my computer uh, to search really for anything, right? Because if I'm searching for a local business, a lot of times I'm on my way there or I'm going to call them. So it makes sense to use my phone. And, if, and the big stat, which I love here, 78% of local mobile searches, so that search right there on my phone to find that business, results in offline purchases. That's eight out of 10 people that do that search on their phone for something is resulting in an offline purchase. So not an e-commerce purchase where they're transacting totally through the device, uh, Amazon, because uh, 100% of my Amazon searches turn into a purchase. Uh, but it's you know, finding a business or finding something nearby, going to it, and then going into that business and transacting. That is powerful, right? You guys are that offline business. So when they are doing that local search, tip one, this is not new. If you've heard us speak, you know it, but I can't tell you how many times, Alexi, I mean, it blows my mind. We do an audit, and this stuff is still not done. Maximize your online presence, all right? The path from social posts to showroom isn't always direct, okay? The path from the search to your showroom isn't always direct. Google yourself. See what others are seeing. Ensure that the data is accurate. Guys, we still have seen it just uh, earlier in the spring this year. We saw Google do something. We saw it tweak out. We saw phone numbers change. We saw URLs change. Like, things happen. Google's not perfect. Facebook's not perfect. Just because you updated that information once doesn't mean that it is evergreen. Right? You need to double check this. Have a plan. Who in your dealership is checking it? How often are they checking it? 
if that person leaves your dealership and no longer works for you, who did that transition to? Get a plan around this, guys. Check the phone numbers regularly. Make sure the URL is correct. Make sure your address is correct. Okay? There, there is an impact of this matching information across different directory sites helping you with local search. So please check that. All right, reduce your PPC spend PPC by boosting your additional organic listings. And this is not just your website. Any of you that have heard me or Alexi speak, you know that if your website isn't already ranking number one, fire your website provider. All right, this is 2016, not 1996, 2006. So let's make sure our website's already ranking number one. But then what else is showing up page one that is supporting your business, right? That is saying, hey, Hold Motors, in this example, is a great place to buy it. Look at all those stars there. That is beautiful. That's like the Hollywood Walk of Fame, all of those stars. This is a great business. I don't even need to read reviews. I'm going to click to call. I'm going to click to look at their inventory. I'm taking that next step. Right? That reduces your need for you to use PPC on your own name when you've got all of these other supporting Site. So please do this. If you don't do anything off of this call, this is the one to be doing. What's your reputation? So again, I was already talking about some of those stars. Customers do read reviews, so make sure you know what those reviews are saying. You want to monitor those sites consistently to know what's happening in a timely manner. Please, 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 if you are going to take the time to respond to reviews, don't ignore your happy customers. It makes you look so much worse than if you weren't to review, respond to reviews at all if you are only responding to negative customers. That is the age-old, squeaky wheel gets the grease, and you guys are just perpetuating that mindset from your customers. So if I took the time to leave a positive review to thank you, right? and a lot of times when they're online, they're, they're quite robust. Take the time to thank them. You don't have to write a novel back. You don't have to write a poem. You don't have to be profound. Just get in there and say, thanks for your feedback. We appreciate it. Okay? Make sure, too, that when, you're, when you are responding to those unhappy customers, that you take that conversation offline. You give them a direct point of contact. In our experience, and Alexi can absolutely speak to this, the highest level of contact you can provide is the best contact. Right? You want to give the general manager, if he's willing to share his information, if he's willing to share his email, his direct line. Like give them a point of contact where they can take it offline. When you're doing the new car or the used car manager, if I really was upset, I typically already talk to that new car manager and that used car manager. So by responding, by that person responding, right, I'm going to be probably more frustrated because you wouldn't handle it when I was there. Now all of a sudden you're going to handle it when I was offline, whereas bringing in a new person it you know, makes me feel like, okay, maybe this new person will handle my issue. Another thing that I've seen, and, and especially you know, with retail businesses, we see this, and, and partly because it is personal, and especially if that person who you have responding was involved, which is why I usually say a higher up person or a customer relations manager if you have to, um, is that emotions can get into play. Don't get into a back and forth in your responses. I would think this would be common sense, but we've been in this game for over six years now, the longest provider in the service, and we still see this. We audit uh, customers all the time, and we still see this happening where someone from the business gets into this online back and forth, and while in the moment that feels gratifying to go tell that customer to pound sand, we've all been there. We know there's crazy customers, right? I'm not saying all your customers are angels walking through the door, and they're always right. You know, that is not the case. Okay, they've got some 1983 Oldsmobile. We don't even sell that vehicle anymore, and they're upset something's going wrong. You're going to be like, buy a new car, man. That being said, don't put that online. Don't get into the back and forth. Don't fire your customers online. It goes viral nearly every single time, and the backlash is so much worse than that instant feeling of gratification when you did it. So please get it offline, have them contact you directly, and fix their issue. Always remember this. Your response, and especially with that crazy customer, your response to them is not for them. 
we're crazy. They're not going to fix it. You know that they're a wackadoodle and that, that you're never going to be able to fix their problem and you can't. Your response is not for them as much as it is, especially when we're talking Google, when we are talking Yelp, when we are talking Facebook, when we are talking cards.com. Your response is for the thousands, and I mean thousands of people that will see that review at some point in time. Right, so your response is to say, hey, look, we are responding. We are engaged. We know what's going on. We're having them call us directly. We want to fix this issue. And it's really to show all of those other potential prospects that you are not clueless. You are not an ostrich with your head in the sand. All right, and of course, now we have maybe a negative review. You know, we don't want them, but they happen. The best way to keep a good system moving forward is to have an ongoing, consistent, consistent process to make it easy for your customers to get their feedback shared publicly, right? You want to make it easy for your happy customers to get it. So what is that process? Are you surveying and redirecting? Right? If there's any General Motors dealerships on this call, you know, your manufacturer has made this much easier for you. Okay, so high five next time you see your factory rep. Okay, we do happen to see that General Motors dealers have more average reviews and more av higher average star ratings because they have a consistent process in place to get more positive reviews. And of course, the more positive reviews you get, that drives down those negatives. Now, why I say consistent, this is really important. Every time we're at a conference, and Alexa, you can, you can speak to this, someone's going to come up and they're going to complain about Yelp. Oh, we have real happy customers. And you know they're leaving reviews for us, and Yelp is blocking them. Well, Yelp is smart, guys. If you get one negative review, and you haven't gotten reviews on Yelp in three months, and you get one negative, and then all of a sudden six positive reviews show up, what does that tell Yelp? You do not have a consistent process in place, and the only reason you're going to solicit those new six positive reviews, which is more than likely from friends and family, is because you got one bad review. So that's the importance of a consistent process, whether that's a survey, however you do it, but get a consistent process to continually get reviews. Right, and there's a lot of good ways to do that, right? We often see having a survey, you know, be an awesome process because it's not just about getting those reviews online, Erica, right? It's about getting the feedback, good and bad. Absolutely. And both is helpful. I mean, how many times have we seen a very happy customer actually give really constructive feedback in a survey that will help you. And you'd love to get that directly first and deal with it, good or bad. And then, yeah, as long as it's consistent. I mean, the sites definitely have improved over the years, and they do track those things. So any inconsistencies, any you know unusual activity yeah. <laughs> is going to get flagged. So it's just best if you guys want to do it for yourself initially to get that feedback, to continually improve, and then certainly you know consistency helps on all the sites. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Now, another way, right, to spend less, get more, is expand the messaging you are already paying a pretty penny for across your social media sites, right? Community social media, anything you're doing in the community, whether it's the local auto show that you're participating, you're spending dollars to participate in that, let people know about it through social media, whether you're doing free social media, your organic posting, pushing that out, or you're doing paid ads to promote it or uh, push it out to a larger audience, right, that may not be existing customers or likers or followers, but get that message out there. Let people know what's going on. You have any incentives going on. You have any events going on at the dealership, right? It always blows my mind that people will spend, what, Alexi, on a, on a radio campaign to promote their their buy now event. I mean, oh how much gosh. would that be? You ran an agency. 20 grand a weekend? Yeah, to have, you know, Harry from K95 LP coming down, guys. Come on, we're going to have clowns. We're going to have the hot dog man. Whatever it is, right? He might get people there. You're spending a lot of money. Why do you not have an event on Facebook? Do you know that anybody following your page will see events in the special section when they log in? Even though they may not see most of your content, if you create an event on your Facebook page for that event, they will see that. It will prompt them to say if they're going or not going. Okay, so please take advantage, expand that message, get more for less. Yeah, I mean, there's so many things every dealership that I know does. You know, community support, you're sponsoring the Little League, you're doing these events, and social media is such a natural way to promote that. And even cross-promote. 
you know, if you're going to spend that 10 or 20 grand with radio station, well, is your event on their social network pages? Yeah, right? that's a great plan. Um, so, you know, guys, there, it just has to be holistic. It has to be a part of what you do consistently again because you are supporting the community. You are spending money on other mediums. Great way to get extra value out of those ad spends that you have in other places to make sure you're also cross promoting through the social channel. And then a great way to tie that into what you're seeing here, guys, is don't let it just live then on Facebook. Right now, some of the things you're going to post are organically on your social media, whether that be Facebook or it's going to be Twitter or both. Right, you're letting people know you're bringing that through. Now bring it onto your website. Right, for those people that hit your website, make your website a one-stop shop. Okay, I may not have bounced out to see your Facebook page, but here, so this is a great example of an interactive social media toolbar. So right here as a customer from any page on your website, I can see all of those events that you've got going on. I can see all of those different things you're promoting in those community events that you're participating in that little league. You don't have the bandwidth or the real estate to be updating all of that information into your native website. A, that's a ridiculous waste of time. B, you don't want to waste the real estate on your actual website. Right? You want that stuff that's above the fold to be your top converting pieces, but you still want to tell the story for that customer that wants to see it. Have that interactive social media toolbar so they can see what people are saying about you from around the internet on different sites so that they can interact with your social page. I can actually like, comment, uh, interact with this dealership right through their social media right on their website so I don't have to leave and go to the most distracting site on the <laughs> internet. Right. I, it always blows my mind when a business, I don't care what the business is, has a link to Facebook on their website. I would ask each of you, we're talking about spending less and getting more, would you please all, after this call, <laughs> take a little time and write up how much you spend to drive people to your website, how much you spend in PPC, how much you spend in display advertising, and then you would put a link on your website for Facebook so they could leave complete, we've all done it. I clicked on the link for Facebook, all of a sudden I see with Bert, oh, I haven't talked to Susie in forever for her birthday, and I'm messaging her, and I'm looking at pictures of her kids. Because if I'm going to messenger, i got to remember a kid's name. You know, <laughs> and then an hour has gone by, and I was, what was I doing? <laughs> oh, that's right. I need a new car. Okay, i got to Google again. Yeah. And now I re-Google you. And your <laughs> competition comes up. And your competition, because <laughs> before I clicked on an ad, this time I Google. This time I might see a bad review that you didn't respond to. So again, be smart. Take off those links to Facebook, off Twitter, off Instagram. That's great that you're on there. Instead, put on an interactive toolbar that allows them to interact with those with those awesome sites and the awesome content that you have without leaving your website. And, you know, definitely this is an educational webinar, um, but we do get questions every time we talk about this, where can I get a toolbar? <laughs> Just so happens, we do have one. It works great. Um, you don't even have to work with us for everything else we do. If you guys are active on social sites, and that's why you put those links on your website to begin with, you can get guys a really cost-effective tool, cost toolbar that can do some cool things, even you know, convert any text on your website to different languages. There's a lot of cool things toolbars do. Certainly there's other folks that offer it, but huge tip, as Erica said, if you take one thing away, definitely do that. Now, the huge, huge thing, you have all heard of it, right? All of the social networks, it is now pay to play. Right, wake up, and we are way past the days of trying, right? Just like Master Yoda, do or do not, there is no try. <laughs> please, please, it is time to get a game plan and be smart around social advertising. It is not a short-term experiment. It's a long-term strategy. I get so excited, and I get so geeked out, and I know Alexi does as well, about social advertising, and we, I mean, nowadays when we speak, we speak spend so much time here because this is the epitome of spending less and getting more. The cost per click, the cost per action on the social site blows your PPC spend out of the water. And if you're doing display, it obliterates that. It's like a landmine on your display <laughs> spend and the, what you're getting out of that, right? Your conversion's there. It is so powerful. The relevancy, the targeting, we're going to talk about some of that a little bit later, 
But I, I get so excited because, again, I mean, I think back when I was uh, in the industry when PPC first came out, what, 15 years ago, and we were all excited about it, and wow, we've got a new way to target customers and people that are actually, you know, shopping and searching these terms, we can serve them up an ad and get them to us, and they're these ugly little just text only and totally budget. Now you have these visual, gorgeous, you can have video, video does great, these amazing ads that are hyper, hyper targeted, unlike the level that you can get with display in a lot of cases, and, and really bring in conquest customers, your existing customers, service, sales, accessories. The power here really is amazing. Okay? And you know, let's make sure though, when we're doing that, we're being really cognizant of the quality. You just paid money for it. <laughs> you wouldn't let an ad run on TV where your general manager is saying the name of your dealership wrong. Right? He's pronouncing your Hyundai dealership Hyundai. It's Sunday, Monday, Hyundai. We know this. You <laughs> wouldn't do it wrong. This is amazing. I mean, this really, I, at NADA this past year, I actually had a whole slide on all of the different flub ups on social media. Just because it's social media doesn't mean you don't have to take it seriously. It takes two seconds to check this, to look it up, right? It's not Subaru, it's Subaru, right? It's Subaru. It's got an A, right? <laughs> We want appealing images. We don't want images that are grainy, that are fuzzy, that are cropped. This is marketing 101. Clear call to action, right? Shop now. Come in today. Contact us now. Don't just have soft sell. You should try it. I've seen that on a manufacturer ad. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> I actually saw the other one, one the other day where uh, the manufacturer completely had a huge typo and I even checked this on my team. I'm like, I can't, this is a screenshot. It was fuzzy. Is this right? Is there an R in this word that's not supposed to be there? Sure enough, there was. Take the time, prove it, because believe me, in the comments of that ad, your customers will go after you. Right. We'll and talk I'll, about that. Yeah, I mean, you definitely want to make sure that you're using a professional firm or someone that's really well trained to do this, guys, because you don't want to try it and think it doesn't work only because the content or the creative is yeah. not compelling. There's so many layers to it. Um, when done correctly, as Erica said, it blows away so many other digital mediums in terms of, you know, cost per action. And you guys can really, really see tangible results. So it's definitely worth doing the right way. Yeah, and that's, this slide here, guys, is exactly what Alexi is talking about, is being smart, incentivizing this, having smart calls to action, having smart offers. Um, we actually just saw one, and, and these are great examples, right? This one, this dealership really went for it. Um, you know, the San Francisco Giants were playing and the Dodgers. Um, so they were promoting tickets to the Dodgers game. 978 post actions. They got a lot of reach on this, right? Really thinking like a customer. What's in it for me? And a great anecdotal example, and it just happened, so we didn't have time to get it in this slide, uh, but I screenshot it, and there was a local dealership here in Arizona, <laughs> and they go, oh, get your air conditioning checked in these hot summer months. Okay, first of all, for Arizona, September, it starts to cool down, right? Yeah, okay, it might have been 120 a month ago, but now it's cooling down, so it's not the most relevant offer to get your AC checked come September. And they said, great special. $199. So then, of course, there's all these comments on it going, wait, that's a, that's a special? Yeah. $199 is a good offer? Yeah. Just to check my AC in September when now I'm starting to roll down my windows and open up my sunroof? Oh, what? October now. Oh, I know. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know what day it is. Thank you. Oh, where's the time going? But, yeah, so, I mean, this is, so really think of this, guys. What is a good offer? If you're incentivizing something, you're spending money on it, what is something that they're going to click on? And especially now, too, make it a format. I, this new format, if you haven't tried it, you're, if, you're, if your firm hasn't done it, I know we're doing it for our customers um, when it makes the most sense, is the Facebook lead capture. We call it tap, tap, done. Um, because literally, as a customer, all i got to do is tap, tap, submit my lead. That's it. I don't type anything. You know, it's like trying to type your phone number in your tiny little phone, um, and it's trying to auto-correct it. Um, <laughs> so please... Uh, be smart about how we're, we're, we're putting in those great things and how are you capturing it. So using the proper ad format from Facebook to then capture your leads. And just what I was talking about, monitoring your ads for comments. Okay, a lot of there can be negative comments that you want to capture, that you want to be aware of. 
Um, but then there's also positive comments and tons of leads buried in the comments. We see that a lot. Too. Exactly, exactly. This is um, a, a, a great example of here. There's some positive things going on here. We're trying to, uh, you know, one of the people saying, you're, you know, check this out. They tag someone. There's a great offer. This person, their friend was in the market for a black Silverado with this great deal. So uh, they tagged Kathy here to check it out. Um, this person said, Daryl, your buddy should act now. Um, only good vehicles are Chevys. So, you know, you see this really great interaction. Are you monitoring it? Are you taking advantage? We've actually had our clients sell vehicles through the comments on their posts or on their ads. Let me give you a little tip, though. If you're trying to manage this in-house, you're not going to see these comments in your regular notification section. Okay? It doesn't show up there. You actually have to go into your ads manager. It's kind of a pain to get to this. It's a lot of work. So again, that's where, as Alexi said before, working with a partner can absolutely help you there because um, it's not going to happen every time. It is sometimes the diamonds in the rough of getting it, but you don't want to miss out on those. Every lead is so important that some of these you know, new types of leads, we don't want to miss those when they're happening. Yeah, and we've, we've absolutely seen um, countless times people saying they're buying a car, servicing a car with the dealership because they were responding to questions and yeah. comments whether it's on a review or it's you know, right on your page in Facebook or in this example, it's on the ad comments. And again, you've got to know how to do it. You've got to be timely. Um, and consumers, not even the ones you're responding to, but the other consumers are watching. They're reading. Yes. They're noticing how you engage. And they will totally separately um, even private message or message right on the ad or through another medium to the dealership that they're buying because they can see how well they interact with consumers because social media is all about that engagement. Yep. This is, it's so new, guys, in that nothing, no other medium you have ever used before has put your response style on blast, right, whether or not you are responding. Think about it. If you get an email lead, do all of your other customers and potential customers know what your response time is, how long it takes you to respond to an email lead? Nope, and thank goodness they don't, <laughs> because we sell mystery shop dealers, okay, and it's bad, guys. It's actually gotten worse. Email lead response has gotten worse over the years. Even though the volume's gone down, it's amazing. It's amazing. So many manufacturers are focused on this now. I'm sure you guys are maybe feeling that, too, but that's why they're focusing on incentives and training around it. Um, they just continue to see that it gets worse. Yeah, and so yeah. here, though, I can absolutely see how long it takes you to respond to someone. Facebook, if people are private messaging you, Facebook now shows how good you are at responding from private messages. Did you even know people could private message you from <laughs> Facebook? Are you responding to that? Who at your dealership, like we talked about before, who at your dealership is responsible for monitoring when any of those new private messages come in and responding to it? And when that person goes out on vacation, who's their backup? Do you have a plan around it? Mark it down. Need a plan around private <laughs> messaging. Or talk to and us offline and give you some tips. For exactly. Sure. <laughs> and like I mentioned before, when we think about what's so powerful here with ads is that targeting. I, I, I briefly mentioned it. It is one of the things that gets, gets us so geeked up here um, is all the levels of targeting, right? We, don't, we can now target people that are, you know, we, we know we can target people that have your vehicle leveraging the Polk data, right, that own your brand, um, using Polk uh, in tender modeling. We can, we can target people that um, have a high likelihood of being in the market within the next 90 days for your brand. Uh, we can use um, uh, other pieces of data, uh, you know, what kind of magazines they subscribe to. I mean, there's so much data that we can use. There's now an integration with Edmunds. Right? And people that are, are shopping through Edmunds, we can now target those people. So extremely, extremely powerful. And you know, that's again where we're going to see you're able to spend less but get more. So when you look at these costs per clicks compared to what you're paying on Google, spend less, guys, get more. I'm not saying abandon a PPC budget altogether. People are still searching businesses. There's still merit there, but I am saying don't blow your whole digital ads budget on third-party inventory sites, display advertising, and PPC. You don't need to spend more 
in your, in your advertising budget, but be smarter about that mix and where you're sharing it. Okay? Reallocate part of that budget, get more, and spend less. Right, really do some analysis. All the time we see dealers, you know, have a kind of a set it and forget it, whether they're doing it in-house or sometimes with a PPC vendor. You know, when was the last time you really looked at what you're getting for the different keywords? And ultimately, what are those conversion ratios? You might be paying for traffic that's not the traffic that you want. Right. Um, so how can you refine that? And if you're spending, you know, five, ten grand uh, PPC, we see that all the time, you know, reallocate a grand of that to something else like social targeting, and you guys will be amazed. And then look at your combined lead counts that month. Look at conversion rates. Look at dollar per copy on each type of lead that you're getting that ultimately does convert. Um, you'll be amazed because it is so targeted. It is so refined. And um, also, you know, not everyone's going to see your offers, right? right? You're targeting only the people that you want to reach, not your competition. You're not necessarily, you know, in a bidding war, war for those same keywords like you see so much in search. And if you're fully managing holistically all of your social sites that include review sites, they're going to rank more organically anyway. And consumers time and time again tell us what 82% of them um, that are searching for dealerships, they tell us every year, that was the most recent stat, look at how you rank in those search results. So look at those star ratings that now appear right in search. Yep. So just by keeping your social networks active, it might actually help improve your PPC results, even if that's what they click, because they've actually seen good content, positive reviews, right. and the fact that you are kind of everywhere in organic definitely helps. They work together, but, but if you're not trying this guy's huge tip, you've got to just reallocate some, some dollars and do it the right way. Right, absolutely. And here's just a great example, right? A great success story. One of the things that we always pride ourselves on is you know, making sure that we can back up anything we're saying. And we have hundreds of these, right, of these great success stories of Facebook ad campaigns. I love this one. This is April 2016, Brown Chevrolet Buick GMC. Um, over 50,000 indi uh, individuals reached with their messaging. They set 31 appointments. They sold eight vehicles, okay? 63% sold customers were new, meaning they had not done business with this dealership in the past. That is huge, right? That is, I was going to do an impression, but I'm not. I'll keep myself from my huge impression. <laughs> you have to think probably who that was going to be. Um, so, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, this is really, really powerful. And then we have these, you know, ad infinitum. We have so many of these examples because they are uh, just extremely powerful. Yeah, and then ROI, that was profit. So that, yeah. was, that was just on vehicle sales profit, obviously not what the, the total retail transaction amount was. I mean, to get that kind of return, and I think they spent just a couple grand in the ads. So yeah, I mean, it's, low. it's amazing, guys. It doesn't, it doesn't cost a lot to get some really powerful results. And the fact that now they've got, you know, they're acquiring new customers, even out of maybe, you know, some zip codes and regions that they're conquesting off of their competition. I mean, what, what kind of value would put on that, right? Absolutely. So that's huge. It's not just they got some more sales. Someone else didn't <laughs> because yep. of it. Yep. And think of the power for service business they're in, right? Now we target them with service ads. And of course, kind of like Alexi was saying before, guys, make room in your marketing budget. You're not advocating you need to spend more. And in fact, Alexi, I would probably wager any of you on this call, we could go through your marketing budget right now, not only save you money, cut costs in your current marketing budget, but get you more results, right? And looking at all these different things, designate a certain amount per month just for social, and of course, have that plan with a qualified partner to make it happen. Absolutely. Um, there's a lot of different ways you guys can do it. A um, lot of tips we can share, certainly, but just, just take a look at even your traditional ad spend. Um, we are consistently seeing, I know we're talking today mostly about digital, right? But in the traditional ad budget, you should look at the reach of any of your ads, radio, TV, if you're still doing print, even mailers. Um, you know, what are their subscription counts? What are the bounce rates? Um, what, what, you know, what are you paying? Are you paying today what you paid four years ago, but there's just less eyeballs on it? You shouldn't be paying the same. And are you auditing those just like you would your digital vendors to then ask for credit, to ask for make it? Um, time and time again, we've helped dealers get make goods and traditional spend because we get you still maybe want to be out there in radio and TV for this segment that's still not DVRing or doesn't have XM, right? That that's still gonna be reached, but it's not the same volume. So you should not be paying the same. And certainly on a make good, 
you can get the agency, the, the media players, to show you the actual results that you got asked, and you might end up getting you know, a free run, a free you know, weekend you know, TV or radio campaign that does save you that 10, 15 grand, reallocate that into trying some new things around social and digital for sure. That's a great point, Alexi. Now, another way to take that and to get you know, more results leveraging the Facebook ads is your database gets even greater results. You can use your own database to target customers and you're going to see a higher conversion because there's higher brand awareness. They already know your brand, they have familiarity, and we definitely see a much lower cost per click here and we see a higher conversion. So very powerful and it's actually not just emails, it's emails and cell phone numbers that you want to load in. There's a much higher match rate on mobile phone numbers. So if you don't have a push within your service department, within your sales department, within your service department, I'm going to push service because that's where you have the highest number of transactions coming through. Um, to get mobile numbers, uh, then I would, I would start looking at that and really getting that because people change their mobile phone number a lot less than they change their email address. So definitely get that, uh, experience the benefits of that higher conversion. And of course, website customers, just like display, just like other uh, types that we can do, uh, retargeting on the different ad sites. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, and we can retarget those customers um, with you know really relevant, specific ads based on what they were looking at on your website. And again, we see increased conversion there. Yeah, and think of everywhere else you're maybe getting you know emails and phone numbers and how you can piggyback. So let's say there is a radio campaign, Enter to Win. You're doing some sort of test drive promotion. You're doing a service mailer. Any of the other campaigns you're spending money on, even traditional, if you're getting any emails or you're getting you know cell phones. You can absolutely see a lift, as Erica said, because there's awareness. Even if those other campaigns don't convert, you can retarget them in social. And it's all about repetition. Marketing 101 is always about frequency, repetition, um, and testing campaigns, right? So we can absolutely do that in a very cost-effective way in social, and it will ultimately help you get greater ROI out of those other investments as well. Yep. And again, talking about mobile, how mobile can you go, here we see um, uh, again, with uh, new ad formats and being really aware of this, they're changing a hundred times as Facebook is not slowing down for anybody. So in local awareness ads, we can do click to contact, right, right from the ad. They can click to call. They can click to get directions. These are huge. And now with this type of ad format, it's not on this slide, um, but uh, we can now track with that mobile device, Facebook, uh, is tracking offline conversions. So if I click to call you or I click to direction, Facebook is identifying that mobile device and if they come into your business, it will mark it as a conversion in your ads reporting. I mean, what? A little scary, maybe a little minority report there, but man, for a <laughs> marketer, that is awesome. For a business, that is awesome to know when those offline conversions are happening. Again, you have to be smart about the type of ads. You have to be smart about what you're running. You've got to be smart about how you're tracking things. Um, and then, of course, if you are having people click to your website, we talk about how mobile you can go in that stat before, right? Um, you know, where uh, over 60% were doing those local searches. If they went to your website, what would they see? Now, a lot of you have gotten way better at mobile websites. I will give you that. It's definitely when we started the business right. six years ago. Uh, it, it's different than it was six years ago, seven years ago with mobile websites, but what still hasn't done a great job of moving forward are the forms on your website to submit. Okay, so depending on what type of offer, and I think of this, this example here is a service offer very purposefully. Okay, some of your, you know, get a quote uh, forms have gotten simple, gotten easy. I still don't see Facebook integration there. That's an opportunity for improvement. So I can just click, click, um, and push my Facebook information in, uh, even on your website. But what about your service scheduling form? You're going to do an offer, get X off of service, come in, here's their service specials. Have you ever tried filling out your service scheduler form off your mobile device? I've done it. It's not a pleasant experience. <laughs> okay, so double check that. Try that. See if it errors out. See if you have to try to squish and move around that form. Because uh, that's a big lost opportunity. One of the number one reasons, you know, the number one most clicked on ad format 
is the mobile ad format is it uh, accounts for over 90% of the clicks on our ads from the mobile ad format. And one of the number one reasons of bounce off of a website, when we have a dealer that looks at their analytics and they go, oh, these bounce. I can tell you right now, when we look at their, we do it from our mobile device, it's because their mobile experience is a bad one. So don't be that guy. Get that fixed. Or girl. <laughs> That's right. Um, so again, looking for some ways you guys can, can find dollars, um, integration fees, production costs. You are potentially paying the same production cost, let's say, on a, on a TV spot um, that's a bookend, even though the only thing that's maybe unique about your creative is truly the bookend, right? Is it the same content, the same jingle? Um, maybe you're just paying for a new voiceover. Why are you still paying three grand, five grand to produce that TV or radio spot? that month if it's truly not unique, if it's truly not fully a brand new um, production crew working on it. Do you ask about how many hours an editor is editing your spot? Um, when you're looking at paying for creative and production fees for graphics, you know, is it again unique or are they selling it to, you know, 20 other dealers, right? Ask those questions. You can find ways to, you know, pick up extra dollars across the board literally every single month, even with your, your current providers just by asking some questions. Sometimes it's an innocent mistake, right? They just keep billing you for something that you really should have been maybe a one-time fee or should have had the amount reduced. So tons of different ways you guys can, can dig in there, find some dollars, and then get those same dollars working for you, let's say, in digital or social media. Yeah, and one thing uh, that I do just have to pipe in on this one would be some of those integration fees. I know that on, on this call, some of you on this call, you are paying probably in excess of two to $3,000 a month DMS integration fees to different partners, all trying to integrate with the same DMS. So, um, you know, really look at that. Um, there are options out there that will let you kind of consolidate um, and, and bring those fees down, and then you can go back and renegotiate with some of those partners that were having to pass through those costs for those integration fees uh, because they're astronomical, frankly. And, you know, it's, it's doing you a disservice um, to that. So uh, that is certainly something when, when you think of your DMS and those integration fees, I would really uh, put all of you on this call to get educated um, around that topic and, you know, kind of what's going on in that space because there is opportunity there to save thousands and thousands and be just as secure, right? Um, you're, you're not violating anything and, and, and be smart about that. And of course, this might seem basic, but it's not happening, guys. And this is, you know, from when I started in the industry 15 years ago, Alexia, you've been in it even longer than me, and I know this, this was a, a big point then as well. How did you hear about us? <laughs> in some ways, right, and with the digital, the beauty of digital is in, in a lot of cases, um, it, it, it can self-identify, but there are, we do see people, because they're doing a lot of research on their own, they are not giving you the opportunity to speak for yourself. They're doing the research, and they are, in some cases, just coming in, right? Because they did their research online, and now they're just coming in. So find out, how did you hear about it? If I were to, in, in, in the dealer group I used to work for, every time we got a lead, right, or, or a, you know, a phone up, or we got a, a, a walk-in traffic, right, uh, in our CRM that wasn't properly sourced that said, you know, how did you hear about us? Phone up. No, no, your phone didn't tell you to call. No. <laughs> they got our phone number from somewhere. Okay. So whenever we would see those, we would kick them back to the salesperson and we would withhold their, co their, um, their comp until they put that in. And then we would spot check and the managers would call the customer to confirm. And you better believe that that salesperson had lied and put the wrong information, right? We dock them on commission. It is that important. And as a salesperson, we have to explain to them. And they would go. They would get very upset about this. But why this is so important is because if you're a salesperson, this helps you get better leads. Why should we be wasting thirty thousand a month on TV if it gets you no leads? What if, to Alexi's point, we could take that thirty thousand dollars? and put it towards social advertising. Get three, four, five times the number of leads that we were getting. Well, and it, with TV, we probably get 100 times the number of leads. 
right, a thousand times the number of leads, and get you more business, Mr. Salesperson or Mrs. Salesperson. So that's why this is so important. Whatever you have to do to drive that home with your team, with your service advisors, right, whoever it is, if you're cashier, whoever's getting this sourcing information, it is just as important, if not more important today because of the more powerful sources available than it was 15 years ago. Right. There, you know, the cost of ignoring this is huge. And as Erica said, there, there's definitely some consumers that do all their research. They'll never call. They don't want you to have their phone number. They won't fill out a web form. They won't submit a lead. And you really do want to know and you want to work with your team to ask them how they found out about you for sure. And Alexi, you commented on this before. Track results to understand. Don't just track them for the sake of tracking. Don't just get a report for the sake of getting a report from your partner and be like, okay, we got a report, good. You know, really track it to understand. And if you need help understanding, talk to your partner about it. They'll explain it. They'll help you see what's in that. Right? Educate yourself around this. Be smart about this. Help understand where things are coming from. Look at your Google Analytics. All right? Allow your vendors to have access to that analytics because they can help you understand what the numbers you're seeing or they can understand if something, they can make their own campaign better. You don't think that the first month we work with something that's going to be our best work? I hope it wouldn't be. It's going to get better and better and better the better we know the client, the better we know their customers, the better we know their market, the better we know their website. And we need data back from you to help do that, right? So uh, be generous with your analytics data. Be smart about your data that you've got. Um, and really track it to understand. And like Alexi said, make decisions. You know, can you get a, a make good on something if that if that TV spot didn't perform like you want to? I actually had a great uh, had a great conversation with someone the other day about this. Where when it comes to direct mail, yes, there is a demographic that still likes and comes in with direct mail. That is a shrinking demographic. We tend to see that in age specific demographic. So change up your direct mail spend to only send direct mail to that demographic. If you are working with a worthwhile direct mail partner, they should be able to filter their database by age and only send the direct mail to those age kick the rest of that money. You're, now you took a $10,000 spend down to a $1,500 spend and take the rest of that to go after the rest of that demographic, which is, I can tell you right now, they're on social media. <laughs> Absolutely. And by now you guys are probably like, wow, this is a lot. A lot of things I got to do. You know, I want to listen to Erica. I want to do all these things, but when am I going to find the time? When am I going to get all of my vendors on calls to do this? Great tip is to schedule one combined oh, call. Tip. Yeah, so with all your vendors. Love it. Love <laughs> you want to get them all on a call for a couple of reasons. One, why not schedule one like 45 minute call once a month in advance to plan for the subsequent month? But let them all go around Robin, working together, sharing information, but also kind of competing, right? They, they should all be performing for you and have everybody talk about their results and their data. You know, that does help them work better together, hopefully. But also, they know every month they got to get on a call with everyone else you're spending money with. You know, they're going to get their act together. They're maybe going to work a little harder to make sure they're definitely giving you ROI. I love that one. Right there, that's what we're talking about. Spending less and getting more, spending less of your time and getting more results. That is such a powerful, powerful tip. I, I love that one. That gets me so excited. I love that one. <laughs> so these are some things in summary we've been talking about. Ways, again, even on that monthly call, right, where you can kind of challenge them. You know, if you're still in there in the traditional, in the traditional media buy, ask them what they got on actual reach with those ratings. The reason you get ratings, it's a guess in advance, and that's what they assign a dollar value for that media buy around the reach they're going to get during that program or that time slot for radio. You know, you're paying more for, let's say, you know, the, uh, the commute drive, right? Well, what if not as many people were listening or did watch the program? You should pay less, and that should be in your contracts already, but if you don't ask, you won't get. Um, and it's across the board, right? Click bounce rates, delivery rates, subscriptions, um, what is their subscription, you know, if you're still doing any sort of newspaper or print, right? What's their volume, you know, this month over even six months ago? I'm telling you, it's probably going down. Why are you paying the same amount? Um, we talked about production fees. Definitely get in there, look at the PPC um, keywords, and really understand sometimes you're seeing bounce or drop, drop traffic. It might be that your pages don't convert, as Erica said. They may not be mobile friendly. 
Um, or it's maybe the targeting around the demographic or, or something like that. So really dig in, spend some time. And again, you don't have to yourself do all of this work. You can delegate it to your vendors. Yep, and, and another thing here is for, for companies you've worked with for a while, and this is another benefit of getting on a call. Now, maybe this isn't the group call, but I hear a lot of people say, oh, I don't have time. I have so many vendors. Okay, A, do the group call to save you time, but then you should be doing, if, if not a, a, a every six months, every year, have a capabilities meeting. You know, have them come in or ha do a call and see what is new, what has changed, what are you not taking advantage of, you know, what is something that you should have in your offering that maybe isn't because you've been a legacy client for three years. Things are on Kidori, it works in the background. My guess is though things have changed that you're not currently taking advantage of. I mean, even though they might have sent you an email about it, I'm not, I'm not saying they've done anything wrong, um, but you haven't been available for calls, they sent you 100 emails, but you get, you get 10,000 emails. So, you know, have that capability to call say, okay guys, this is the call, we tell me all the cool stuff you're doing. What am I not using that I need to start using? Again, you'll get more for paying less. And with that, guys, if you want to know what are some of those things that uh, you are doing um, that we mentioned on this call that's an area of opportunity, you can request a free budget review, an Intel report, or that mystery shop for your store. Just go to digitalairstrike.com slash resources. Um, and that's a great place where you can request those. Um, and we will work with you um, on, on each of those items at no charge to you, right? Get more, pay less. That's right. And with that, um, do we have any questions from the audience? Brian, we'll, we'll turn it back over to you to see uh, what has been coming through. Yes, absolutely. Um, great presentation, Erica and Alexi. Uh, this is Brian Agney with Auto Success again. Uh, please type in all your questions in the question bar as we kind of described at the beginning. Our first question is, great webinar, do you build the ads once we send them to you? Currently our Facebook advertiser builds the ads as part of the program. Yeah, I mean typically in 99% in of the cases we are building all the ads. We work with our partners to get, you know, what offers they want to promote uh, this month. Um, but then also, if, you know, you're strapped, you're busy, one of the things we do, we have the incentive offers. We can also just run with that if you don't have time to get with us. Uh, we can use the regional and uh, OEM incentive offer that's applicable for your store as well. Uh, but we will do all the creative. Now, if you did have something that you were running that you really liked and you wanted to send us over some raw files for us to customize it and edit it so that it's appropriate for Facebook, we can do that. Or if you had a video, a uh, great example, Alexi mentioned, you know, when you're running those TV spots, you should be putting them on YouTube. You should be putting them on Facebook, right? And make ads out of those. We see huge ROI on video spots being run. Um, there's such a high demand for videos. You can actually have not that great video, um, and it'll still perform well on uh, YouTube advertising, on Facebook advertising. Um, certainly, the better, the better the spot is, um, the more creative it is, the better it's going to do. Uh, but that definitely gets some huge ROI um, when we get those. Yeah, and getting back to production fees. So make sure with any vendor that you're already paying for production for creative that it gives you the right to use those files and that you have the ability with licensing to use them in other mediums. Um, absolutely do that um, because you're paying for it. You should get those to leverage, let's say, on social. So definitely. But we work with dealers in, in any way that, that works for them. Um, we do not charge them extra to be building, you know, those ads from scratch if that's what they want us to do. We have a full in-house creative team. Okay. This this question is actually pretty simple. It says, what DPI do we need for picks in Facebook ads? Oh, someone's got to hit me with the technical one. <laughs> I have to look at ads again with our social, um, our SME on ads for the DPI for that, but if you did provide your information, we'll get right back to it in the next 20 minutes. I can get that real quick from him. All right. Um, should you delete a post if it has nasty negative comments on it? It really depends on the situation with the type of post. So for example, if you had a really negative comment on a social ad, for example, you'd want to respond to that person but then you don't want to keep running that ad so that other people see it, right? You can actually just change the campaign, take it down, rerun the campaign so you're not broadcasting it. 
Um, depending on the comment exactly, you know, how do, what do you consider nasty? We talked about kind of, you know, the whole consumer engagement, just like a public review. If it's on your, your Facebook page, it's on your wall, um, you may want to respond and show everyone that you can fix the situation and then later potentially remove it. Um, it just, we, we've seen every kind of good and bad comment and post, and it, it does depend on the dealer and the situation, but don't automatically just go delete it because if you don't respond to that person, if you don't fix it, they're going to find multiple ways to continue to get your attention through social networks, and you definitely want to address it. And usually, you know, one of the best ways to do that, if it's negative, is, is respond with a real, you know, GSM, your general manager's cell, um, or email so you can take it offline and find out what's going on with the person. Um, we've also seen, uh, happens fairly frequently, unfortunately, competitors may go on your pages and kind of put out, you know, nasty grams. And if it's not a legitimate person, a customer, we're, we're really fortunate to work directly with the social networks and oftentimes we can actually get it removed, especially if it does tend to go viral or they're intentionally trying to hurt your reputation. Um, that is the benefit of working with somebody that has those relationships with the network. All right, and then I had that answer with one of our team members that's in here the webinar ran out our ad team. I can see him right through the glass window here in our conference room. So 1,200 by 628 for uh, most of all of the ads, most regular ads, and then 600 by 600 for carousel ads. So if you guys aren't using carousel, um, there's some great uses, especially when you're highlighting features of a vehicle. Um, we've done that. Or if you're highlight, highlighting multiple uh, service offers, carousel is also great for that. Um, uh, or multiple vehicles, right? The new OEM incentives just came out, and you want to show three different vehicles uh, that have 0% financing this month. So again, 1,200 by 628 or 600 by 600 for carousel. All right. Um, should we respond to all comments on a Facebook post? It depends on kind of how the comments are you know, unfolding, right? We'll sometimes see that there's even people uh, responding to each other, right? There's kind of like creates this community. Um, you can respond to a string if they're kind of happening, you know, real-time rapid fire, but absolutely, the more that you respond again um, to let them know that you're engaged, you care that they took the time to ask a question or respond or even tag a friend, we see that more and more now. They'll just tag a friend's name basically giving you an implied endorsement like, hey, John Smith, you want to check out this offer at this dealership. Um, absolutely. You can even just respond back and say, yes, John, we'd love to see it. Come on down or here's my direct line or, or someone that can work with you on this offer or service special or scheduling an appointment, for sure. Uh, there's no reason why you wouldn't, right? It's just like you should be responding to inbound communication by email. You want to leverage that. And again, it's not just to get that one person in, although of course you want to engage with that individual if they're in the market, but it's to show everyone else that you care. You're one of the good guys or gals, right? You're going to be out there and you are on top of your business and they are really reading those comments, the amount of eyeballs that can be watching how you engage and interact with people on the social network is just huge. Yeah, and to that point, I mean, again, I, we, we definitely see it when comments are kind of unfolding in, in rapid fire, um, you know, you tend to see, you know, best practice, you can like all of them, you don't have to say like, thanks, yes, 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 thanks, 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 that looks weird, right? I mean, use common sense around it too, um, but you definitely want to acknowledge, especially if a lot happened, just kind of like when on your birthday, and a million people um, are uh, thanking you on your birthday. You may not have the time to thank every single one of them, right? You might say thanks everybody for all the great wishes um, or commenting on some of those threads. So you know, use common sense on that. But to Alexi's point, you know, be smart about it as well. There's definitely leads in there um, that warrant maybe going a little further. But it, I will say that it could hurt you if you were to say the same exact response to every single little comment on there. I right. saw a business see that the other day where it's thanks, 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 thanks. So there's like 80 million thanks in there. Yeah. It's <laughs> weird. So right. use common sense. But I, I would say too, if you guys are trying to manage this in-house, just like any other KPIs, you've got you know response time for anything else. You know, the phone rings once or you know, you've got to respond to emails within so many minutes or, or hopefully not an hour, but um, set a specific person to manage this and give them a KPI around when they have to respond it and how you want them to do that. We also encourage you guys to have a social media policy if you're doing this in-house yeah, and that all of, all of your staff know 
are they even allowed to respond? You know, you don't want them piggybacking on in a way that might not be appropriate. Um, and who to go to and who to designate that would do that, and the kind of the rules of engagement. Um, we provide that to uh, at no cost if people want to see a sample version. We'd encourage you guys to also write in some policies in your employee handbooks around it. Or of course, you know, work with a partner that that'll proactively kind of you know do it for you. And what's nice about that too is there's consistency in voice. We all know about the turnover in your dealership, right? Um, you don't want someone to leave and, and walk out with their only you know password for your login for some of these sites, and then your IT department shuts down their email and it all goes away, and now you can't even reset it. So just really have a plan in place whether you want to do it in-house or you work with a partner um, to make sure that you've, you've kind of got your own keys to the kingdom here. Well, we're at the top of the hour. I enjoyed webinaring with Erica yes. and our friends at Auto Success. Um, anything else? If, if you guys have another question, for sure let us know. Otherwise, um, we can certainly take anything offline. If you guys want to email us, go to digitalairstruck.com. You can reach us. Um, you can go on our social sites. You can message us. Um, and certainly even um, offline, if we get a list of any additional questions, we can answer them individually. Great. Well, well thank you. Thank you, Erica and Alexi. I Appreciate you taking the time, and I, 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 I encourage everyone that's on this on this uh, webinar to join Auto Success webinars. Please contact them directly. Please contact me directly if you have any any comments or questions, or there's anything we can do to help you. Uh, again, this is Brian Angney. I appreciate you coming to the webinar today, and I hope to see you at a future webinar. Uh, have a great afternoon, Alexi and Erica. Is there anything else that you'd like to share? No, we're great. Have a great afternoon, everybody, and a great weekend. And here's to a strong month. Yes. <laughs> Lots of sales and, and service are out. Thanks, everybody. Bye.